Hello and welcome to another AIC video. Uh, this is the first part of a bigger video that I plan on doing uh, that is going over upgrading older laptops that are not technically compatible to Windows 11 uh, with Windows 11, uh, making sure that they can run it. Um, personal feeling that uh, people are going to get rid of very usable computers simply because they're no longer compatible with um, the current version of win supported Windows and uh, to avoid e-waste and to continue using per perfectly serviceable systems. This, this, there's nothing wrong with my X270 here. It's a fine computer, has a great screen, great battery life, CPU still pretty decent uh, performance-wise. Um, it just isn't gonna be compatible with the latest release of Windows uh, at the end of this year, at the end of 2025. Uh, and you really have two options. Either you do a workaround and install Windows 11, or you switch to Linux. And the reason why I'm not switching to Linux is this laptop specifically I use for when I'm working on cars and I have a lot of uh, software for my cars, uh, diagnostic software, stuff like that, that's Windows compatible only. So uh, I have to run Windows on here. Um, I need it to be able to connect to the internet for downloading diagnostics and, and stuff like that. Uh, and so it, but it doesn't make sense to go out and buy a whole new laptop when there's nothing wrong with this. I just need it to run a supported version of Windows. And the fact that Microsoft has decided to not support these systems is absolutely insane. So that's my own opinion. Let's go ahead and walk through <laughs> some of the things that you need to do uh, to be able to do this. First thing you need is uh, a Windows 11 ISO. Really easy to do. It doesn't cost anything to do. Um, you just Google... Uh, Windows 11 media creation tool and you come here and you download this file this uh, application right here then you'll need to something to turn that ISO into a bootable USB drive so you need a USB drive obviously of at least eight gigabytes you see that here um, and I've always used Rufus uh, again just Google Rufus R-U-F-U-S download the latest version which currently at the time of making this video is 4.6 pretty simple uh, and then what we do is we go ahead and run the media creation tool which I've already started I'm not actually going to run through this because it just takes too long even just doing a demonstration takes forever all right um, in Windows 10 this button actually used to mean something um, it would let you do an ISO that was either 32-bit or 64-bit uh, it lets you do different versions. Anyways, it just, I don't know. I don't understand why that's here in Windows 11. We click next. And then you want to make sure you switch this from USB drive to ISO. Uh, come on. And then next. And where you save it. And obviously I already have it created, so we're not going to do that. It takes 15-ish, 20 minutes to do that, because depending on your internet connection, because it has to download all the files. <clears throat> Next thing that you do is you go ahead and open Rufus, which I have here, and plug in your USB drive. Uh, we don't need this to update because we're gonna wipe this computer clean. And then we select our ISO, we go to desktop where I have it, and Windows. This takes a few moments. All right, <clears throat> leave everything on here, default, and then you click on start, and then you'll have some options here. You need to make sure you remove the requirement for four plus gigs of RAM and secure boot uh, TPM 2.0. It's checked by default. Uh, remove requirement for an online Microsoft account. You absolutely wanna do that. Uh, create a local account with a username. I highly recommend that. You can always add a Microsoft account later, but uh, we can go ahead and just create a generic login uh, regional settings is the same as this users that's fine uh, disable data collection i like to do that that way i don't have to uncheck mark all those boxes saves me a couple steps and i disable bitlocker because i switch to computers so often and i swap out hardware so often i like to make sure that i'm not going to brick a drive through bitlocker um it's bit me in the past so we'll go ahead and hit okay and then it will destroy everything on, on the USB drive. So we're not actually gonna do that right now because this drive is 
already set up. So we're gonna hit cancel here. Again, that takes uh, 15, 20 ish minutes, depending on if you have a faster drive or not, uh, to, to do that. Then the next thing I'd recommend doing is once you have this drive created, go to whatever uh, manufacturer of your laptop and go to their driver download. In fact, you should almost do this beforehand, just make sure they're still available. But check for drivers. And the two big ones that you want is your wireless driver and your and if you're using something with a dedicated graphics card, uh, graphics drivers. Uh, those will probably be your biggest headache if you don't have those. And if you're not sure what uh, your system is, if you go into device manager, go that go to settings, go down to oh wrong one uh, system, and then about, and you scroll down to device manager. Go on device manager, go to network adapters, and it's right here. You have your Intel dual band wireless AC8265. Uh, this is, like I said, an X270. There's a couple different um, wireless cards that this could have, uh, but right here is the 8265, and I can uh, download this driver right here, which I've already done. Um, and, and I copied it to the USB drive after uh, making it the Windows 11 bootable. If you do it beforehand, it's just going to get deleted. So you want to make sure you do that afterwards. Um, now, one thing you'll also want to do is this will completely wipe everything off your computer. So you want to take the time and make sure you have everything backed up. Now, I have a local network attached storage here that I copy everything onto. Uh, you may want to pay for like a Google Drive and just sync everything to a Google Drive beforehand. That way you can sync it back again or copy it back again. Uh, just make sure once again that you back up everything because this will wipe your drive clean. I cannot emphasize that enough. There will be nothing <laughs> on your computer when you're done. All right, the next thing we need to do is check some settings in BIOS. Um, there's two ways of getting there. If we go back to settings, go back to home, uh, we go to update and security. We go to recovery and we go to advanced startup. <clears throat> On this screen, we go to troubleshoot, advanced options, UEFI firmware settings. Now on this computer, the other thing I can do, and I'll show this in a different step, is as it's booting, it gives me the option to hit enter to interrupt normal startup. Uh, we don't need to do that, Let's see right here, to interrupt double press enter. Not all systems let you do that. That's a Lenovo thing, which I appreciate. We're entering the setup. So this, how this looks will depend on your computer, but we want to go to, uh, in this case, it's startup. Usually it's under a boot setting. We want to change the UEFI legacy boot. You'll either have um, BIOS, uh, both UEFI, UEFI or legacy, you'll have some combination. It needs to be the UEFI only. You cannot boot this on BIOS or a hybrid or a combined. Um, it needs to be the UEFI only, which we are already on. So we'll go ahead and as it saving changes. Now <clears throat> we're going to head and push and hold enter while this boots. Should, oh, there we go. All right, and then we can hit F12 for a temporary device. And we're gonna go down to the generic USB device. And that is the Windows 11 logo. You can tell because it's not angled. The Windows 10 one is like, almost like a less than sign in its shape squished on this side. Now this will be a lot faster if you use a USB 3.0 drive. All of mine have died. I need to buy new ones. So that's something that needs to go on my list. While this is loading up, I just want to show you, um, I have these two HP systems here and I have upgraded them to Windows 11. I just want to show you this has a 
fifth gen core i7. actually the window I wanted. And the nice thing about um, if you have a fourth gen or later uh, Intel CPU, um, I don't have older AMD processors. Sorry, the, the oldest one I have currently is on my T495, which can run Windows 11 uh, without any of this. So um, actually I want to go to system and about so we're running Windows 11 Pro and it is activated. So if you have a fourth gen or newer uh, Intel Core i5 or Intel Core processor, uh, it should auto activate uh, the operating system. It grabs whatever key is there. So this originally came with uh, Windows 8. Uh, and so I've been able to activate Windows 8, Windows 10 and Windows 11 all through the uh, you know, whatever built-in system is for the operating system. If we go to this laptop, this is a third gen Core i7. I upgraded this from a Core i5 to a Core i7, but it's still just a third gen. This is Elite Book uh, 2570p. up and I did have to use um, so this was an activated system with Windows 10 and I went ahead and grabbed the license key that was on it and it is activated as well so we're running Windows 11 home uh, which is fine and it's Core i7 3632QM, uh, so that's the 35 watt four core Core i7 of this generation. So i just showing you that you can run it on this system and, and it works great. Um, so let's go ahead, next, bring this a little bit closer again. So we have a US keyboard next install Windows 11 and again it makes you check mark the box I agree everything will be deleted including my files apps and settings that's fine I mean it's a pain in the butt but <laughs> it will be fine and then this will take a while so we'll come back once this is finished installing oh you got to go through the disk so uh, disk one is the USB we don't want to do anything to that but we want to go ahead and just delete all the partitions on disk zero All right, so disk zero is now completely blank and we can hit next. And install, there we go. Now this will take uh, quite a few minutes and we'll be back and when it's done. All right, Windows is installed. Now at this point, um, we're not going to connect to the Wi-Fi. So I click on, I don't have internet. That way it just boots into uh, Windows. Go through whole, this whole stuff. All right, so a couple things that I've noticed is some of these systems, the hotkeys are often not installed. Now this is a much newer laptop than these two. Uh, but the hotkeys were installed. Wi-Fi was 
not installed, but we obviously have it because we showed it before. Uh, graphics card um, and stuff like that. So uh, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi, run updates and all that jazz. But as you can see, out of the box, it's running and we are good to go now. It's just customization and, and getting things to work. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comment section down below. Hopefully I walk through some of the issues that I've had. Uh, the biggest w issue I had on this HP, if I bring it up here, was the graphics drivers. Oh my goodness, because this has dedicated graphics on this uh, computer. And put it up here. So if we go down to device manager on this, this thing has uh, an AMD Fire Pro M4150. And the drivers for this are from 2015. So see all right here. Um, what I had to do for this is I had to download the drivers on HP's website and those installed. And then I had to go to AMD's website and run their drivers. Out of the box, Windows just installed generic graphics drivers which was missing a lot of stuff things like games and stuff kept crashing on me uh the amd drivers wouldn't install by themselves i had to download the hp drivers and then download the amd drivers uh, the biggest reason for that is uh, if i go to more options this uh, configure switchable graphics so if you have something a laptop with dedicated graphics card you're going to uh, have problems with it not using that dedicated graphics card for stuff uh, or it will use it all the time if unless you have this control center uh, so that's something that you'll want to go through the hassle of making sure you those drivers are available for you uh, the hotkeys i think for this one i had to download the ones for Windows 8.1 to get them to work on here. There were no options for Windows 10 because Windows 10, they've always just worked. I didn't have to download anything separate for those. Um, so yeah, so hopefully, again, that answers any questions you may have uh, if you're looking to do this. I definitely think it's worth doing if you have an older computer that's still functional, still very usable in today's world. Uh, Windows 11 is not much more system resource heavy than Windows 10, I would re uh, suggest strongly that you have a system that can have 16 gigs of RAM in it for Windows 11. Uh, 8 is functional, but 16 is better. Uh, definitely not 4. I would not use a system that only has 4 gigs of RAM. So uh, I don't have a ton of older laptops that are new enough that I'd want to install Windows 11. Like I'm not going to do it on a Core 2 Duo. Um, <laughs> that's just not happening. Uh, but uh, if you want to know any more, I will definitely do my best to answer any questions you leave down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you have an amazing day.